Hey everyone, this is Nick and this is the Slimbook Executive 16. It's slim, it's lightweight, it's very powerful, it's got a 16 inch screen in a 15 inch form factor, it's got good battery life and it's also not that expensive for what it is. Looking at it now, it's basically the laptop I should have bought a few months ago. So let's take a look at this handsome beast and let's take a look at our handsome sponsor. Thanks to OnlyOffice for sponsoring this video. OnlyOffice is the only office suite I use on all my Linux PCs nowadays. It's open source, it's fast, it looks good, and it's super compatible with Microsoft Office formats. You can download it for free and run it locally on any computer, whatever the operating system, including Android and iOS. Or you can couple that with a free personal cloud that lets you edit online and can be connected to a lot of storage services you might already use, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Nextcloud, OneDrive, and a lot more. This personal cloud has received a big update recently with a dark theme, a free library of templates, it supports a ton more languages, and it has a lot of hotkeys you can use to navigate on top of having an interface refresh. If you need a powerful, cloud-ready, and compatible Office suite for Linux, or any other operating system, I don't think you can do better than only Office. So head over to the link in the description below to download it or create your own personal cloud. So let's begin with how it looks and how it feels to use. It is undeniably a beautiful laptop. It's basically the bigger brother of the smaller Executive 14 that I reviewed a while ago on the channel. It has that wedge design and tapered profile that makes it look smaller than it is, but it's absolutely not big. It might be 16 inches, but the dimensions are pretty close to a 15 inch laptop. It's 35 centimeters in length, 24 in depth, and it's two centimeters thick at its highest point. So it's not small, but it's not a huge device either. And it's really light at 1.5 kilos only. That's barely heavier than a 13 or 14 inch regular laptop made out of aluminum. So it's not that heavy. You can carry it around and it won't break your back. It's not a big, huge brick. That's mainly due to the fact that the chassis is magnesium and not aluminium. So it's not as solid, but it's also super light. And in my experience, it's very durable. My Slimbook Pro X14 is more than two years old now. And despite having been slung into a bag almost every day since then, it barely shows any scratches and it doesn't have a single dent. Now that's not something I can say about myself. I got my fair share of scratches and dents in the past two years. The hinge is very sturdy and doesn't wobble at all when you're typing. And you can open it with one finger without toppling the whole laptop. In terms of branding, all you have is the Slimbook logo in the top left corner of the screen, and that's it. Well, that's if you don't count the enormous number of stickers covering the palm rest. Here we have a sticker for the speakers, the GPU, the CPU, Linux, and the magnesium chassis. Again, I can't help but feel that Slimbook is trolling me with all these stickers after the stunt they pulled on my review of the Executive 14. So bring it on guys, come on, I think you can add some more. Now solidity wise, it feels very well built. It doesn't creak, it doesn't bend, and the deck flex is limited to a minimum. Either on the palm rest, the keyboard, the part closest to the hinge, it's all solid. And if you want, you can open it up by removing the bottom panel with a few standard screws and you can upgrade the RAM and the storage. Now let's talk about the specs, cause this is a beefy laptop. The Executive 16 has only one CPU option, the Core i7 12700H. It's a 14 core, 20 threads, 12th gen Intel CPU, and it's pretty beastly. It also brings its integrated XE graphics, which have proven to be quite efficient. Coupled with that is an 82 watt hour battery. Pretty huge and we'll see later in the video that it's pretty competent. It's accompanied by an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti dedicated GPU. And I can hear your eyes rolling around. Yeah, I can hear it. And yeah, sure, I'd love some more options with AMD GPUs, but apparently they just can't produce enough for everyone. And I have yet to test a single laptop with these inside. So for now, Nvidia is all there is, and honestly, it just works. Now, the only choices you can make are the RAM from 16 to 64 gigabytes, the storage from one 500 gigabyte SSD to two modules of two terabytes, if you want these in RAID, and the keyboard layout. Now, by default, you'll get 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of SSD. 
but my review unit came with 64 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD. Now the 64 gigabyte option is definitely there exclusively for people who use Chrome. Okay, there might be other use cases than Chrome for having that amount of RAM. You can also buy the device with a few dongles, including a USB-C to double HDMI ports, or a USB-C hub with Ethernet, two more USB-C, two USB-A, and an HDMI port. They're quality dongles made out of aluminium. Now, for the I.O., on the left, you have a USB-C port, it's 3.2 Gen 2, and supports DisplayPort 1.4, and it can charge the laptop. We also have a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, a full-size SD card slot, and a headphone and mic combo jack. On the right, we have a DC barrel charger, an HDMI 2.0 port, another USB-A port, which is 3.2 Gen 1, and a Thunderbolt 4 port, which also supports charging, of course. The Executive 16 also has Wi-Fi 6 from Intel and Bluetooth 5.1. Now, let's talk display, because if you're looking for a 16-inch laptop, you probably need some good screen real estate. And here, you've got it. It's 16-inch, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which I know some of you love, it's 90 Hz refresh rate, and it's 2560 by 1600. It's 400 nits, which goes pretty bright, and it has anti-glare coating, so it's not very reflective at all. Contrast ratio is 1500 by 1, which is okay, and it has really good viewing angles and covers 99% of sRGB. Bezels are minimal, which I like, and that's also what allows the laptop to be relatively compact for the display size. It's a good display, and I think the intended target, mostly creative professionals or prosumers, will also really love it. I tried video editing on it, and the color accuracy felt really good, even compared to my desktop ultra-wide. On top of the display, you have two cameras. The first webcam is infrared, that lets you use software like Howdy or Slimbook Face, which is based on Howdy, to unlock your computer with your face. The second webcam is a regular 1080p one, and it's decent. It's not potato quality, but it's not smartphone quality either. It's joined by a microphone that can only be qualified as decent if you lower the gain a lot. I'm at probably one-sixth of the total volume I could be at. It picks up some internal fan noise, it picks up on the key presses, and it also picks up on the clicks of the touchpad. It will be suitable for video conferencing, but only for video conferencing. The speakers, on the other hand, are pretty good. They are 2 watts, they have some amount of bass, but they do tend to distort sound if you push the volume to 100%. Fortunately, they get really loud, so you can also just keep the volume at 80% and you will still give your neighbors an earful and it won't distort. I really enjoy seeing a good focus on these three elements, webcam, mic, and speakers, especially on premium laptops. They've been left on the side of the road for too long, and for the past few years, they've been steadily improving, probably because Apple got some better stuff in their laptops, and people are following, but the end result is good. On to the keyboard, then. This thing has a numpad, which I know some of you don't like, but as someone who uses a French AZRT layout, which requires to press Shift, plus a number to actually get a number, a numpad is an absolute necessity if there is room for it. Yeah, yeah, I know, stupid French people and their stupid keyboard layouts, but hey, that's what I use and that's what I'm used to. So yeah, I'm taking the numpad, it's cool. The keyboard here is large, well-spaced, which means mistypes are very unlikely to happen. It's decently clicky, with a sound that I find quite pleasing. The keys don't have much key travel though. Think pre-Butterfly MacBook keyboards. Pressing a key does feel pretty good though, it's quite bouncy, it's not too hard at the end of the key press, you don't feel like you're typing on a hard surface or on glass. It's backlit as well, and the only issue I have with it is that the printing or etching on the keys doesn't seem quite centered on all keys. On some, the symbol is shifted to the left, mostly on the keys that are the most off-center. So maybe it's intentional, but it did bother me a bit. Yes, it doesn't take much to bother me in that regard, just any slight adjustment out of symmetry and I get all stressed out. The touchpad is glass, it's super smooth and it's the biggest touchpad I have ever seen. Like seriously, it's the size of the screen of my Steam Deck. 
It's very precise and the click sound is really soft and nice. It feels really solid. That touchpad is so big, in fact, that it has the ability to have the right half of it disabled entirely by double tapping in the right hand corner. Now, if you're afraid of palm rejection issues, know that it's also perfect at that. I typed with my palm resting on it and the cursor doesn't move and it doesn't click. You can even use it while your palm sits on it. It's just fantastic. And it's also not quite completely centered. Almost, but not completely. Now, all in all, these are great inputs. Not much to complain about. Apart from the letter centering thingy, basically, they nailed it. Now, let's complete this with some performance benchmarks and the battery life. The i7-12700 is a beast. There's no two ways about it. In Geekbench 5, with a single core score of 1860 and a multi-core of 10858, it's comparable to my desktop Ryzen 5 5800H and way better in single core. Important to note, do make sure that if you want to use the CPU at its fullest, you charge it with a DC barrel charger or a USB-C charger that does 120 watts. Anything under that and you're not going to get the best performance possible. Also important to note, this laptop gets warm. It won't burn you or anything, but if you do graphics intensive stuff, like for example gaming, it definitely will get hot on the top and on the bottom of the device. Now, speaking of gaming, I ran Total War Warhammer 3, a notoriously badly optimized title. And at the native 2560 by 1600 resolution and every detail on low, I got an average of 47 FPS. I got slightly better performance at 1920 by 1200 and medium graphics with about 50 to 55 FPS. You can absolutely lower the resolution, get to high graphics and use FSR and you'll get close to 60 FPS in that game. Now this is an RTX 3050 Ti, so it's designed for 1080p gaming at medium settings and that's what it delivers. You're not going to play at super high details, it's not a gaming laptop, but it can absolutely game in great conditions. And the fan, while audible, isn't atrociously loud. Now, as per battery life, running YouTube videos in a loop, it lasted for about four and a half hours. In a more real-life use case scenario with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, screen brightness at 50%, and writing scripts, listening to music, watching the occasional video, it lasted for about seven hours. And keep in mind, this is in hybrid graphics mode and at 90 Hz. If you go to 60 Hz and use Intel only, you can definitely reach eight and a half hours, which is really decent. Okay, so this laptop aims squarely at creative professionals and prosumers. It's definitely designed to give some GPU power for graphics intensive tasks, and the display is absolutely a great selling point for that market too. So graphics design, video editing, 3D modeling, the screen real estate and the power you get are just perfect for that. And all that in a small package that looks really good. So what do I think? Well, I think at 1549 euros, all taxes included, it's a pretty great choice. This nets you one of the best laptop CPUs there are, an RTX 3050 Ti, 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 terabytes of SSD, all in a very premium chassis with a fantastic screen, an awesome touchpad and keyboard and a decent enough webcam, mic and speaker combo. And yeah, basically this is the laptop I wish I bought a few months ago. I got a Stellaris 15 from Tuxedo, which is a sponsor of the channel, but not of this video specifically. And it's a laptop I love and I use every day. It has the same performance as this Executive 16, but with a 3060 instead of the 3050 Ti. It's heavier by half a kilo, it's thicker by 1.5 centimeters, and the screen is only 15 inches in the same form factor. It also cost me about 400 euros more than what this device would have cost me. And while the Executive 16 is a bit slower at video editing and rendering, because its GPU is not as good, it's also a lot more comfortable to carry around and to write stuff on. So yeah, the Executive 16 is the laptop I would have bought if I had known about it at the time. It's just fantastic. Great screen real estate, great chassis. If you need a big device with great performance and runs Linux really well, I think that's your boy. It's really cool. And this concludes this video. Thanks for watching it. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and what I do, you can either join my Patreon subscribers or YouTube members to get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on my videos. 
you can just click on the super thanks button underneath the video or the PayPal link in the description. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!